tells the sun to rise every morning, colors the sky with the shades of his glory, fills us with mercy and love, Jesus does. Who holds the orphan, comforts the widow, cries for injustice, defeats every sorrow, carries the pain of his children, Jesus does. about a certain Jewish tradition in Genesis 17, 12. For the generations to come, every male among you who is eight days old must be circumcised. Why did Moses say the eighth day? He could have said anything. He could have said the fifth week, the twelfth year, that yet, anything. But he said the eighth day. Well, modern scientists have discovered some fascinating things about blood clotting. There are two major elements in your bloodstream that are necessary to clot your blood. Actually, on a molecular level, there are about two dozen events that have to occur in proper sequence to clot your blood. You miss one, you're dead. Event A would have to happen first, which would trigger event B. B happens and then triggers C. C happens and then on down the line. Question for you. How did that evolve over millions of years where creatures were just reproducing themselves. They were just copying their existing DNA and making copying errors, mutations. I have a whole series of talks on that. So they're just making copying errors in their DNA. How did they develop this system with two dozen events that happen in a row? You miss one, you're, you're dead. So even if you had A and B by accident, it doesn't do anything. A, B, C, D, E, F, G doesn't do anything. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, R, R, W, A, A. No, two dozen in a row right from the get-go. That's a design feature. It cannot evolve. 
But keeping it simpler, on a larger level, there are two major elements, vitamin K and something called prothrombin. Modern scientists have discovered that vitamin K develops in a newborn somewhere between days five and seven. That's when it kicks in. And prothrombin looks like this. I will graph it, and I will explain the graph. The dotted line across the top represents the normal level of prothrombin in your body. The numbers across the bottom represent days after birth. Scientists have discovered on day one, a baby has 90% of its prothrombin. That's pretty high. That's not bad. But then it drops dangerously low between days two and five, down to only 30%. That's not good at all. And then on day eight, it spikes to 110 percent of its normal level, it will never be that high again the rest of your entire life, only on day eight. So if you are a baby and you need a surgical procedure, day eight would be the perfect day because for sure you have vitamin K by then and you have more prothrombin than you'll ever have the rest of your life. Did Moses know anything about vitamin K and prothrombin? Obviously not. God said, Mo, write it down. He writes it down. Now, Amy and I have Two children, they're 26 and 28. Um, we kept feeding them, so they grew up. But our son, who was our firstborn, when Amy was pregnant with him, we went to the hospital to go through the birthing classes. This was a new deal to us. So we're sitting in the class, and the nurse says, if you have a baby boy and would like this procedure, we'll just take him down the hall and bring him back. And I remember sitting there being very nervous hearing that because I'm thinking, shouldn't we come back on day eight? But I was very shy, so I didn't say anything. The nurse kept teaching. Someone else raised their hand and said, hey, nurse, you just said you're giving the baby a shot. Why, why would the baby need a shot? It's just born. She goes, well, that's vitamin K. So today, they artificially introduced vitamin K on day one, and you got 90% of your prothrombin. It's not a problem. It's not a moral issue or anything. When I heard that, the light bulb went on, and my hand went up all by itself, and I was thinking, get back here. <laughs> She called on me, and I shared with the entire class what Moses said in Genesis about this. I don't know if they were impressed or not, but it was an opportunity to talk about the inspiration of Scripture.